Praise God. Good morning. <clears throat> Listen, folks. The unpardonable sin, all right, is denying the power of the Holy Spirit, access, allowing Him to come into your life. Without that, the work of transforming us cannot take place. It's as simple as that. To sit there, listen, the goodness and the mercy of God has been his patience for the past 6,000 years. All right? And the kingdom of heaven that came forth 2,000 years ago and the gospel of salvation the cross of Christ and the shed blood so the sins could be forgiven. If you've not received, if you've not repented, if you've not turned away, are you going to tell me now that all of that is going to be forgiven? If that's true, then what was the sense of his crucifixion? You're treading on very thin ice when you start telling people there is no eternal hell fire. And I don't care how you want to interpret it. I've tried to share with some of them, forgive me, Father, but <laughs> eternal hell fire, torment for an evil and wicked person, okay, is having to live in the purging fire of the righteousness of God eternally. <laughs> they hate it. They hate the truth. It causes them to gnash their teeth. Ugh! They can't and it, it's just so, they hate it so much. Well, they're bound by their chains of wickedness eternally. Because they repent it not. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make everybody believe that it's going to be okay that they don't repent from the sins. That there's not going to be any, no punishment, no judgment, nothing. <clears throat> so what? God didn't destroy the first earth realm by a flood and destroy every one of them, right? Listen. In the darkness and the wickedness of evil, okay, there is nothing that men thought to do but evil continually. If it had not been for the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, He who restrains the evil, you're getting ready to find out what it looks like when that evil is unrestrained. And as I've said it before, and I'll say it again, then you'll understand why it needs to be cast into the fire and remain there eternally. Some of you, <laughs> some of you have had life just a little too easy. Some of you are the fatted souls made ready for the slaughter. Though I make my bed in hell, there God is with me. There is a torment by which the conviction of the Holy Spirit deals with our conscience. As long as we don't turn away from it and we repent. But there are those, my brothers and sisters, who do not repent and sear their consciousness to the point that they're not able to repent.
Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. Woe unto them who tread lightly upon the cross of Christ. And when you start telling people that there's not an eternal fire of what these people are cast into, the darkness and the children of darkness, you tread lightly upon the cross of Christ. You make it of no effect, as if nothing had to take place, and that there was no consequence for not allowing it to take place. Well, I had a good word to give this morning, but unfortunately I <laughs> went to the YouTube page. Oh my God, and some of them are still at it. That's okay. There's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is pray. Pray for them, because they seriously need your prayers. They need all of our prayers. <clears throat> they shall mount up as eagles. Amen? Amen. And so, this brightness that came forth from me as I started to turn away from the work, so somewhere along the line, either I already have or started to, I don't know how that all takes place, but for some reason I tell them, I'm sorry I tried to wake you up. Forgive me. And I just turn around and walk away but as I walk away, this was in a dream, as I walk away, I say to myself, no, I came here to warn them of what's getting ready to take place, and that's what I'm going to do. And just as I turn around, whoosh, this light starts shining forth. It just is so brilliant that it totally dissolves me into nothing but pure light. And I believe that's what's getting ready to take place for all the sons and daughters. Amen, Jesus? That the mounting up on the eagle's wings is as the same as what we see in the book of Revelations when we see that the church is carried away by the wings of an eagle. Amen? Amen. That's what's getting ready to take place. It's my belief that the sons the Melchizedek priesthood, under the anointed power and authority of God, are getting ready to go through this earth like a roaring lion, calling forth the repentance ministers of fire. Amen, Jesus. Just judging the household of faith. Well, who do you think that judgment comes through? Comes by the Father through the sons and daughters. That's who it comes from. That's what the dream was I had. Not so much, I don't get dreams no more like that. It's more like, oh my God, it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle. And, and that's what we're, it's not against flesh and blood. That's why I tried to share with Sister Cass that she wanted to go out there in the natural, physical realm and go and do these things against the 501c3. It's not the organizations. It's the people in the organizations. And more than that, it's the spirit, the Jezebel spirit, the whore, the harlot, the bondwoman, cardinal mind. It's those things that the sons come against and the daughters. Amen? We're taking back the kingdom from them who have taken it by force. Amen? So, I mean, to me, that was a wonderful dream because I walked out to my little patio. And I could literally feel wings <laughs> in my back. I stood there for a while. I said, wow. <laughs> you know, I could sense it in the spirit. Eagle's wings. That's the anointing, I believe. That's the anointing that comes upon the sons and daughters. It's getting ready to take place. And when it does, they rise up. The dead in Christ rise up. Amen, Jesus? I've mentioned to you before 
Those dead in Christ are not the ones who are asleep in their graves. The dead in Christ are they who have laid down their lives in this life. Death to self. The crucifixion of the flesh. Not them that think about it. Not them that talk about it. Them who have actually done it. These be the sons and daughters of God. And it's them that's getting ready to rise up. Amen, Jesus? There's a few out there sharing it with you. I don't think they really know that what they're sharing, but the Spirit leading them to say things that are directly in line with exactly what I've been sharing with you. That's what's getting ready to take place, folks. That battle in the kingdom of heaven that casts Satan down to the earth is the same battle that takes place down here in the Spirit of God, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, through the anointing. All right? And the five wise receive that oil. And the five foolish don't. So they're left to go through tribulation. While the church is gathered together, amen, the wheat into the barn, all right, and taken off into a secret place. I, I got to tell you, I just don't believe, I don't believe that there is a rapture in regards to the wheat. And I've said this before, the 60-fold and the 30-fold, I just don't believe it. They're given rewards in, uh, according to their uh, measure of faith, okay, and that's it. But, uh, amen, Jesus, sons and daughters receive immortality. But that's as the Father would have it to be, and who are we to judge him? So, amen, Jesus. Uh, give a shout out to my sister Jolene. Thank you very much for all the things that you've tried to do. And I appreciate, you know, whatever support for those of you that visit this channel. If by now you don't believe by faith of those things which are about to take place. I mean, what in any of the videos that I have shared with you are not in the scriptures. Just because you don't seem to understand them the way the Father was, is about to reveal them to you. When the bridesmaids are awakened, the virgins, bridesmaid, call them what you want. Okay. They're awakened. <laughs> Whatever and whoever they are, they get woke up. Well, that means what? They've been asleep spiritually. Well, when you get woke up, spiritually speaking, the eyes of your understanding are opened. So you can see the truth. What? The revealed word of the Father. And that's the rock, the bedrock, of which the foundation of Jesus' church is placed upon. That's what he was telling us when he said he said nothing, he heard not the Father say, and he did nothing, he saw not the Father do. He was sharing with us what the revealed word of the Father is. And that's what's given to the sons and daughters. They're given the revealed word of the Father. It's right there in, in the book. It just, the eyes of our understanding has not been opened to see it. It's been shared with me and I believe with some others too. Watchmen maybe. I'm not certain exactly how all that works together or why I've been called to say what I've been saying to you or sharing with you. All of this, you know, when it happens, then you'll know, oh, okay, well, he was right. Amen, <laughs> Jesus. But I just hope it's not too late because a part of this is coming into it by faith. A big part. Amen? So, those of you that do watch this channel, if you're starting to come into this and starting to receive it by faith, starting to understand a little bit more by what's been shared, if you've gone over some of the videos, now you're just not going to get this if you don't go back through some of the videos and start hitting them. It doesn't matter which one in particular, any one of them is going to have something to do with the sons and the daughters or the spirit, soul, and body or... Saul, David, and uh, Solomon, okay, author and perfecter, beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, the two feedings, 
Okay? They all relate to that last flock, to that flock of which comes forth in the same spirit, anointing, okay, of the first assembly. That's why when the Lord gave me the dream about the Messiah's second assembly, he's referring to the other flock of which ga Jesus gathers together. Who's Jesus? The spirit of prophecy and the anointed word of God. That's Jesus, folks. <coughs> That's what's taking place. Now, how does he do that? Like he's always done it. He established the church through brothers and sisters in the Lord, anointed by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to go forth to gather them in from the highways and the byways. Why would you think it would be any different in the finished work? It works through brothers and sisters in the Lord who have received the anointed Word of God and the covering of the Holy Spirit so it's by His Spirit that this takes place. That's why he said to me in my dream, I'll let you know what to say and when to say it. I believe that's true of all the sons and daughters. He's going to let us know what to say and when to say it. I really believe that by faith, we're going to take back that kingdom from them who took it by force. You know who I'm talking about out there in that churchiosity world. I believe we take it back. As a matter of fact, I believe those are cities, okay, <laughs> that they build that we receive. <laughs> we get them. All them buildings they got set up, amen, Jesus? They're ours. Everything. They just built them for us. They were the builders for us. You know, <laughs> the Lord contracted them to build the buildings, the cities, so they could Give them to us, because they're ours. Amen, Jesus? They're ours. And that's what's getting ready to take place. Huh. They talk about the love and the mercy of God. <sighs> Father God, I don't think they understand what the love and the mercy of God is all about. I think they've been hid up in their little panel houses with their little luxuries. I told you about the hedges that was put up around just like it was put up around uh, uh, Job, okay? Then the devil was allowed to come in, the hedge was taken down, the devil was allowed to come in and put a little destruction in his life there, okay? Because sometimes that's what it takes. Well, these hedges have been put up around them. They're getting ready to be taken down. So a lot of them who have not suffered in this life been dealt with by the Father, are going to go through the tribulation for the sake of saving their souls. Okay? Those hedges are going to come down. They're not going to enter into the anointing. They're not going to come be gathered together. They're going to go through the trampling upon by the foot of men in the outer court, go through tribulations, and I believe that the other foot company of the remnant of natural Israel that is saved out because of the promise made to Abraham not because of the covenant they covenant it ended the, the branch was broken off given a letter of divorcement the old the new could not begin until the old ended it's the same with the Melchizedek priesthood the in part ministry ends before the Melchizedek priesthood can come forth they all happen. They'll get ready to take place right here, right now. Very, very, very soon. I start waking up feeling like i got eagle's wings on the back of me. Trust me. It's real, real close. Very close. So, just wanted to share that. And uh, what I was going to say is that, you know, if you believe by faith, don't you think you ought to be spreading this word? Now, if you're not spreading it yourself on your own channel and your own videos, that's understandable. But, you know, there's a lot of brothers out here who are sharing the truth of the Word of God. And they really deserve your support. So this is your way of entering in by faith.
Sooner or later, you're going to have to make that decision. I told you about the Valley of Decision, the Valley of Jehoshaphat. It's all spiritual first. This is the trying and testing of your faith, judgment of the households of faith. This is all what's getting ready to take place right now. The world's not going to hardly notice it, but it's definitely going to take place in the ministries. I can assure you of that. Well, I love you, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> faith uh, is an action. Okay? My sister Jolene got that. She understood it. She picked up on it, and she's she been going with it ever since. Man, you just don't understand. That if you believe by faith, you need to move on your faith. Okay? It's an action. Amen. So, I love it, and uh, please don't fall for uh, the deception that's out there, because it's going to be great. They want to make everybody feel good, that everything's okay, evil is good, good is evil, blah, 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 blah. You know? Just so you... <laughs> You end up in the same place they're going to end up, okay? A line was drawn. Look back when Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham. It's a clear and perfect story. There's a void between him and the rich man, of which the rich man is in torment. Now, I don't care how you come about understanding that torment. I'll agree with a certain extent of not under having a spiritual understanding of what that torment is. But torment, sister, is torment. Now, how do they get tormented? Well, I, you know, thought about this for a day or so. And I said, well, okay, yeah. For a pure and perfect and righteous God, their torment is to live in the eternal fire of righteousness. <laughs> bound by the chains of their wickedness. You know, uh, like Stephen, uh, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he started sharing that ministry, man, they just gasped. Oh, they hated it. Oh, they wanted to kill him. Well, that's what they're going to be chained in the fire of. Eternal righteousness. They hate it. That's a just and merciful God to me. Let them deal with the truth and the mercy and the love of God eternally chained by their wickedness because they repent it not. Yeah. My Lord didn't die for nothing. Okay? There was a very, very powerful reason why what took place had to take place. And anybody to make light of that to me, woe unto them. For they tread lightly upon the cross of Christ. They make it of little or no effect. By telling others there's no eternal hell fire. There's no reason for repentance. That's what it all amounts to. You can't... That's a double-minded, divided-tongued person. Saying one thing and doing another. Amen. He's Father God, help them to see the truth about that. Just... Let's turn away from that stuff. That's the best I can say. Amen, Jesus. So, I love you. The Lord bless you and keep you today. In Yeshua's name. Amen. <laughs>